Hey, are you rock stars? What's going on? It's your girl. You know, when people say that on videos, it's so funny to me. They don't probably don't say that no more, but maybe they do. Um, but you are on a winning walk with Christina, and this is a winning walk in short talk. I was just thinking about all the people now that are currently on my prayer list and how my prayer list is filling up with people. It's so many people now that are not feeling well at all. Um, you know, the different viruses going around and different sinus and allergies and just medical conditions in general. And then there's a lot of people that are dealing with emotional pain, especially from this past weekend with Mother's Day. A lot of uh, people have lost their mothers and they're really missing them badly. And a lot of people have lost their children and they're feeling the pain of that. And it was just a rough weekend for them. Well, I was one of those people. Um, grief comes in waves. It ebbs and flows. Some Mother's Day, I can rejoice and enjoy what my family is doing for me. And how they treat me like a queen. And just doing all the things they know that bring me joy. And going all out of their way. And some Mother's Day, like this Mother's Day, it's really not my family as much as it is me. I just was missing my mother terribly. I thought, okay, maybe I need to just go to the grave and uh, visit her and take her flowers and stuff and sit with her and talk to her and cry. Maybe that will be that, but that helped, but not 100%. I mean, I carried that, that, uh, sadness into the week but even though you are uh sad and grieving and hurting there's still other people around that need you and need what you have for them you know law still has a work for you to do you still gotta work you still gotta take care of your family you still gotta tend to the needs of others and pray for them and in a seat and you can do that and still on the inside be hurting and in a lot of instances it's good that you do do that because it keeps the focus off of you and your pain because you're not the only one going through so I worked out this weekend and I'm doing uh, a lot better now because I find too, when I begin to go through like that, I can it could pull me into a hole, into a deep pit, if I don't begin to fight, begin to pull out my the weapons of my warfare, and pull out the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's just the extra, you know. Daily, I try to pray and focus on the word of God for the day. But when I'm going through like that, I need an extra dose. And so I was giving myself that extra dose and I'm coming out of coming out of that period of grief. I've had enough periods of grief to understand now that that's just what it is. It's a period of grief. It comes and it goes. Uh, but sometimes, like this weekend, it just rocks you. It hits you out of the loop. And, uh, and I just got to thinking about that. You know, when you're praying to God, when you're talking to Him about what you're going to through, and you are to cast all your cares on Him because He cares for you, you are to, uh, with prayer, and supplication, you're supposed to make your request known to God. You're not supposed to sugarcoat things around Him. You're not supposed to um, act like everything is kosher with Him because He knows. You're supposed to tell Him exactly how you feel. And when you do, when you lift your cares to God in that way, then the peace of God that passes all understanding does guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus and it eases the pain but what if you do all of those things and you're still hurting 
What if you do all of that and the pain is still there? It may have lessened, but it's still there. Or what if you do all of that and you're still hurting just the way you were before you prayed? What do you do then? Do you, uh, do you just say, well, it's not working. God just wants me to hurt. Uh, there's no purpose to this. I'm in pain and I just move out. You know, do you get angry with God? Because sometimes, and I know we don't want to hear this, but it's true. Sometimes we pray and we say, Lord, get me out of this. This is hurting me so bad. I can barely function or I feel that I can barely function. Lord, you got to help me. And he eases the pain. It hurts, but not as bad. Sometimes he's very gracious and he says, baby, I lift it. I lift it off of you. And he lifts it off and he lifts it away. And immediately you feel this peace and this calm. But sometimes, or sometimes, when you hear from the Lord, I'm not going to lift anything off of you and I'm not going to ease it at all. When you hear from God, when you hear from him, can you hear him say that and still worship him? Why are you sick? Why are you hurt? While he's answered you and told you no. While he's not only told you no, but he hasn't told you why. Can you worship him? Can you worship him when what you heard from God and you know it to be him by the Holy Spirit if it doesn't line up with your intents, your plans, your purposes, how you feel about the situation, your time frame, because see, our God works on his time and his time is not our time. A thousand years is as a day to the Lord. A thousand of our years is as a day to the Lord. He's not on our time. He sits outside of our time and he dictates our time. Our times are in his hands. <clears throat> so when we don't get, when we hear from the Lord and we don't get the answer that we desire from him, the relief that we believe is ours, healing is the children's bread. We should know a moment of suffering. But the word says, in this life, you'll have trouble. You'll have suffering. In this body, in this mind, you'll have moments of pain. Some of those moments are light and momentary. Some of them are elongated for decades. Can you worship him? If he doesn't give you that relief, but he gives you the strength to endure the pain, can you worship him? As he gives you the strength to work through the grief and the sorrow and all of the physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. Will you worship him? Is he great? Is he great? Or does the sun have to be shining and I'll have to be well in your world? And you've heard from God and you're watching God fulfill your wildest dreams and all is well with you is the only great thing. Is he great on the mountaintop in the power of his resurrection? Only then, or can he be great in the fellowship of his sufferings? You know, you taking up your cross and following him daily 
and suffering along the way. In your Via Dolorosa, is he worthy of worship? And can you worship him? Can you worship him? I know you're able and I know you can. Save through the fire with your mighty hand. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. I know the sorrow and I know the hurt would all go away if you just say the word. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone, alone. Can you worship him? Can you worship him while you are sick? Can you worship him when he has told you no? Can you endure? Think about it. Think about it. He's worthy of worship. It's a hard worship. It's a difficult worship. But it is a worship that honors and pleases him. And as a follower of the Lord Jesus, it is a requirement. Because in all things, he is merciful and kind to us. Meditate on these words. Think about them. I know I am. I want to be a great, well-rounded worshiper with all that I go through. Y'all have an awesome, awesome day.